Brady Miller with Go Hunt and have another gear list for you. This is going to be for my 2022 spring bear hunt coming up here in the next month. Roughly going to be a 10 day backcountry style hunt. So everything here is what I would take if I was going solo on this hunt, which I'm not quite sure what I'm doing yet, but we'll start rolling into my gear and some thoughts behind why I take what I do. So we're going to jump into some of the clothes that I wear on a daily basis. Obviously I'll start off with a caveat on the clothes. Use whatever you feel comfortable using. Like obviously all this gear I have sitting here, you know, I use it for a reason, but if you have other stuff, by all means use it. I'm not saying you have to use this to bear hunt. So just want to toss it out there first. So we'll jump into, again, these are clothes worn. I'll use just the silk uh, Sika boxers, the same boxers I've always run. You guys see me use these in all my other gearless videos. And then pants for spring bear hunt. I really like solid colors on my pants. Main reason, you can see ticks on your pants so you know when they're crawling up you so you can know to remove those ticks and burn them with a lighter. So the pants I run is the Sitka uh, mountain pants in this solid color and I do have the knee pads in it. They're just my go-to spring bear hunting pants. Perfect for if it gets warm out, perfect if it gets cool out. Always ready to perform when I need to. Uh, upper body, uh, the go-to classic, again, that I've always had, Sitka core lightweight hoodie. Absolutely love this hiking around. If it gets cool out, I have the hoodie, breathes really well. And this upper piece, I do have it in um, subalpine. But again, if you really want to find out where those ticks are at, maybe grab one of the uh, solid colors in this. And that way you can make sure you don't get uh, some ticks biting you. Because there's a lot of them out there in the spring. So we got that, that, and then I guess we'll jump into some of the footwear items. So socks, again, run the same thing every single year. These are the uh, darn tough um, Merino full cushion 212s, I do believe. Boots, uh, these are the Hanwag Elverstone 2 GTX boots. One is on a ton of bear hunts, wore them on a lot of high country mule deer hunts. Just a really solid option in early season. They still allow me my foot to flex a little bit. They're not a super stiff boot, which I really like for stepping over logs, sticks, that sort of thing. And I can also be light and fast on these. They're not like a big, you know, giant leather boot. And on the inside of it, I do have the uh, Sheep Feet Custom Orthotics. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which Sheep Feet model I have. I think I have the full double cushion. But yeah, love the Custom Orthotics. They're actually built to my foot. Gators. Again, I pretty much use gators all year round. Some people will make fun of me for that, but I don't really care because you never know if it's going to rain in the morning. Spring, spring hunts, it could snow. You have a bunch of debris, trying to protect my pants, trying to try protect my boots from getting you know, different junk in there. So I always run gators. And again, gators are also great because in my head, I also think ticks can't quite crawl up that as fast. But that's probably a false statement, but it's whatever you think, it's going to work. So these are the Peaks Storm Castle gators. I think there's a size large XL. Really, really like them. This is probably the second full year I've been running these, maybe third. But yeah, I always have gators in all my hunts. Like I said, just never know what kind of conditions you're going to run into. And then I have a Sika Stealth belt, which unfortunately I'm wearing on my body right now. But just a belt I've always been using for quite a while. And then rain gear, since this is a spring hunt and I'm hoping we get some weather. That way it's not super hot and the bears aren't going to be active. So I hope we get some rain, maybe some snow. And I just like really lightweight pieces of gear. So these are just the Sitka um, dew point rain jacket and pants in the pyrite color. These are the ones that they updated a couple years ago. They're a little bit lighter, a little bit durable. And again, I don't really want to bring a bunch of bulky rain gear because for the most part, I don't use my rain gear. Um, even if it's just lightly raining and I won't use it, but a complete downpour, I still want to be able to hunt. So I'll have this in the bottom of my pack or try smarter to actually put it in the top of my pack. That way, easy access for when I need it. And then uh, insulation layers. Since again, we're gonna, I'm gonna be backpacking. Gonna need some insulation layers so I can stay out there in glass. So some of the clothes I'm gonna be packing. Obviously those are rain gear, clothes packed. Um, Sitka Kelvin light down. These are the three quarter pants in subalpine. Again, these might look really weird. You get a lot of questions about why I actually use these, but I have gaiters. I have, you know, good quality pants, good socks, good boots. I don't really need a full length down pant on an early season hunt like this. Yes, temperatures could be cold, could be raining, could be wet, nasty. But again, I have gaiters that come all the way up my body, the lower part of my body, and actually help my lower legs stay a little bit warm. So I feel like these are a great option, especially when I'm trying to save a little bit of weight. Yeah, it's not a lot, but just save some weight on my backpack. 
jacket, Kelvin light down jacket, subalpine. Again, just a super solid piece. I can, you know, if it gets cold out, I would say I have a 15 degree bag, we'll talk about later, but I could also wear this to bed, FDB, wear it on camp, and it's just a perfect glassing piece. Very, very warm, still very light, and probably one of my all time favorite pieces. Another one of my insulation layers is gonna be a Sitka Core Heavyweight Hoodie. Again, just love the hood, love the fit, just love everything about it because again, when I'm sitting there glassing, I wanna be more effective and not be shivering and cold, so I will throw some of these layers on that way I can glass more effectively. If I can be comfortable, I'm gonna glass more bears. And a well, beanie. I've been going over, like trying out different beanies all the time, trying to figure out which one's gonna work well for me that's, you know, able to sleep in it at night and then also be able to glass and hunt with it. And since, you know, we just started carrying Fall Raven, I decided to try, try it out. So this is the Fall Raven Bry Byron? I believe it's Byron. So I'm excited to try this one out the first time on Idaho Hunt. So we'll give it a shot. Gloves, everyone knows my all-time favorite gloves are the Sitka Gunner gloves. These are great for glassing around camp, doing different things. You never know. And I can also shoot in these if needed, but I will prefer to take this off when I put my finger on the trigger. But at least I can glass with it, and they're good, you know, leather gloves. So like I said, cutting wood, that sort of thing, hiking in. Hands get cold, might want to throw these on. It's not too much, not too much bulk. And also when I'm sitting there glassing, if it does get some wet elements, I will throw on the Sitka Stormfront GTX gloves. And they do actually have a little liner on the inside that you could pull out and use as just a, I guess we're halfway there, might as well pull it out. If you just want to use that and not have the, the shell part. But if it's going to be raining, snowing, I want to sit there and glass, the shell's kind of nice. Keep my hands a little warm because again, I have long arms, so my hands do get cold. That's why I usually carry a couple extra sets of gloves. And that's why while I'm talking about this sort of gear, like I've looked at some of my stuff in the past of what I've used, and while I'm hunting, I might take you know, my phone and my notepad and write down what gear pieces I actually don't use on a hunt because that's a good way to tell what you should be using for the next time you go out hunting. So last year I realized I took some uh, Sika Down mittens in there, never actually used them on the bear hunt, even though it was kind of cold out. So that's why this year I eliminated that from my gear kit. And I just go through and figure out which gear I use, which I don't. And you can make notes in your phone, that way people will, uh, or you, understand what to take next time and not take a bunch of gear that just sits in the bottom of your backpack and you don't use it. That's kind of why I switched up that this year. And then one of my insulation pieces, I guess, too, wind windbreaker, um, I'm sitting there glassing, is this gonna be a Sitka Jetstream jacket? Again, I pretty much take this on every single hunt. It's just a classic piece for me. Yes, it does weigh a little bit more. Maybe I could get by with, you know, some other lightweight, maybe a vest underneath my down jacket. But I really like this for just sitting around glassing, leaning against stuff, going through some dark burnt timber, and I'm not tearing up some of my you know, more expensive down gear. So this is a great pe insulation piece sitting in a glassing, and it's got some DWR quality, so I can sit there if it's just misting, raining, and not get too wet. Okay, one last piece. I always, again, carry some sort of leggings underneath my, or leggings just in case it gets cold. I'll put these on underneath my mountain pants. Not gonna hike around these by any means, I don't wanna sweat, but sit around glassing, and I wanna sit there and glass all day, maybe a big giant canyon, I will throw these on underneath my mountain pants just to, uh, again, be more comfortable. All right, that's pretty much, I do believe, all the clothes. Ooh, I got a hat on here. I think this is the, uh, the new Go Hunt uh, Alpha. Alpha hat. So Go Hunt Alpha hat. I always have some sort of baseball hat. I think this is Richardson 212, which is probably one of my all-time favorite hats. So I will have that on the hunt as well. And again, as you know, I went through some of the clothes. I don't have any blaze orange on here because I'm potentially hunting two different states this fall. One requires blaze orange, another one does not. So if you have a state that requires blaze orange, be sure you go buy the required square inches, hat, vest, that sort of thing. Now we'll go into, let's jump into some Camping gear, maybe. I got a miscellaneous camping gear all over the place. But camping gear. So, I've gone back and forth throughout the years on floorless shelters, on spring bear hunts, and then going back to a tent. For a while, I hated the floor shelter after using it because there were so many ticks that would crawl on me at night. And then I went back to a regular tent and closed one. And this year, I'm going back to a florist again. I think the benefits of a florist outweigh a regular tent on a spring bear hunt. has had more room. I can pitch it in nasty, steep environments and still be able to get underneath here and get all the elements need be. So this is the uh, Seek Outside little bug out with the uh, three-piece vestibule. 
and this is just a random C to Summit compression sack. I think it's like an extra small. So as you can see, I can fit a you know, decent sized TP into a very small package, so it'll fit my backpack a lot easier. And then normally, when I was running the little bug out, I was always just cutting poles for pitching that or using my trekking poles. But this year, I finally decided to pony up and buy the carbon fiber poles for the little bug out. And I actually don't weigh anything, so I figure it's going to be good to uh, finally splurge and spend some money in here and not have to cut sticks and find that perfect stick, because you never know where you're going to hunt might not have that right type of thing. So that's that. TP. Um, let's jump into the ground sheet. This is just a Tyvek, Tyvex ground sheet that I just cut to a certain length. As you can see, it has seen a million hunts. And again, it's just basically getting off the ground, not going to really add any insulation to the ground, but at least I'm going to protect my sleeping pad from the elements of the ground. I don't want to pop it. I did pop one of my sleeping pads last year, but it was just old. But that's why I always carry one of these on here. And it keeps me out of the mud. That way I don't get my sleeping bag all dirty. If I do have to throw it on the ground, it's already been raining, I can uh, have a nice dry spot for my sleeping pad. Sleeping pad, we'll jump into that. Thermarest Mew Air Uber Light. This is a regular size, which is a little short for me, but again, I don't really mind that if I'm saving a little bit of ounces here and there just to help out so I can carry some of this extra heavier stuff. So really love this pad, it's got a good R value. Very, very lightweight. As you can see, it doesn't take up any room in my backpack. And when I actually throw this in my backpack, I will take this little, uh, protective thing off here just to, again, save a 0 .00001 ounces. Ounces add to pounds, pounds equal pain. Uh, pillow, this is the uh, Big Agnes AXL pillow. Again, just a super nice little backcountry piece of comfort. I have gone in the past using my den jacket as a pillow, but this thing weighs absolutely nothing, so might as well just carry that and have a good night's sleep when I need to, which is pretty much every night, I guess. Sleeping bag, this is a Stone Glacier, Ooh, we're going to make a mess, Stone Glacier Chilkoot 15 degree bag, had this bag again forever, it's definitely going to be, you know, it's one of those pieces that buy once, cry once, and absolutely love this bag, it still compresses down really small, and I believe I have a, another one of these Sea to Summit compression sacks, this one, I can't, size small, it does fit really, really tight, so I try not to put my down bag in here for very long, so I, you know, if I'm leaving in a week, I'm not going to put my sleeping bag in here and leave it compressed for a week because I want to wreck some of the down feathers. But again, this just makes it so it's a lot smaller in my backpack, and that way I can carry some other fun toys with. But super great sleeping bag. One more piece of gear that I guess could go into multiple categories. I don't know if it's footwear, I don't know if it's hiking, packing in, whatever you want to call it. But I got my Peak 60 Sticks. These are the Backcountry Elite trekking poles. Um, it's just super great having trekking poles. Like you always hear me say, it's four-wheel drive for hunting. And there's a million different brands out there. And I've been trying out Peaks the last two years and really enjoy them. So these, last year I had the Pros. This year I'm trying out the Elites just to give more feedback on trekking poles and trying them out. All right, some of the miscellaneous camping gear. We'll jump into some water stuff first since I see it sitting here. This is the Platypus Big Zip 3 liter water bladder basically and normally when I'm packing in I always carry two liters of water to start and I'm hoping I can find some water along the trail because I don't want to start my hike carrying a bunch of extra weight because usually it's always a big steep nasty hill somewhere you have to climb so two liters of water in there one thing I really like about this makes it super easy because the big zip on the top I can throw a bunch of snow in here melt snow if I need to or just get easy access to the top part and there's a quick disconnect right here so I can just quick disconnect to keep some things in my backpack if need be and then the other water, water filter that I'm running is the Platypus Quick Draw just filter system. Basically, it has a little one liter bag. That's the dirty bag. And this is the filter part. Squeeze it on top or twist it on top and then put it into either my Platypus or my Nalgene. And I've used a bunch of other ones too. Sawyer, they're all, all really good. I just every now and then want to try something new and see if it's going to be faster and lighter and more efficient. And somewhere in here, you know, let's try to find it right now. I also have, since we're talking about water, again, I always carry Aquamira drops, part A and part B, and there's a little container I put them in, and these are actually just little ultralight ones I've converted the normal drops into, and I just make sure I label them A and B so I don't get them mess, mixed up, or mixed up. All right, kind of a new piece of gear for me this year is the Jetboil Stash stove system. Um, I'm gonna try this out, it's gonna be a little lighter, 
And it's one thing I really liked about how like everything just fits inside of this really nicely. Um, you can have your little, you know, fuel canister attached to the lid, very convenient. And on the inside, you have your stove part, and I could probably put my lighter in there. I could probably stick some extra gloves in there, some random pieces, maybe a lighter. That way, everything's not like, well, I guess it doesn't really bounce around too much. But the other day I was using it, I had some things bouncing around in there, and that way it would make it a little bit quieter. But I'm really excited to try this out in some backcountry hunts this fall and spring right now. All right, now let's jump into some random kill kit areas. So a kill kit bag is just my normal stone glacier camp pullout. As you can see, it's very beat up, got a few holes in there, but it's still kicking. And I call it a kill kit, but it's got a lot of other just random things in here. Um, toilet paper, everyone knows, if you listen to a couple of the podcasts where I basically made fun of a lot of people for using wet wipes, I use normal toilet paper because that's what you're supposed to use. And I actually weigh out the exact amount of toilet paper I need for a full week. So it's usually less than an ounce. If it works for you, use it. But I will say that's the better way to go because you can't, uh, you can't use wet wipes as fire starter. So if you're in a situation where you need a light of fire, wet wipes aren't going to cut it. But that will burn. And then I have a bunch of, uh, these are salt, salt pills, electrolytes, and then some Advil in here. Really like salt pills because as you're just pounding through the mountains, you're going to need some salt to make sure you're not going to be cramping. So I like to bring a bunch of those. Some random pieces of electrical tape, attaching tags, fixing gear, maybe I break something, and then even wrapping it around the muzzle brake for water and snow prevention. Knife is um, goat knives, uh, Capra TI. Replaceable blade knife, and again, one thing I really like about it, it has these replaceable bits on the back, goes into quarters drive, that way I can tighten things on my gun, tighten things on my tripod, and this makes it a multi-purpose style knife with replaceable blades. And I usually have, I don't know, an assortment of blades, 60 A's, maybe some 70's in here. I got a little blower here for optics, whether it's rifle scope, spotting scope, camera lens, that sort of thing, lens pen, Zeiss little uh, camera wipes. Again, keep your optics clear. iPhone charge cord. I have a micro USB cord for my Garmin InReach Mini. Two different lighters. Small BIC, or small BIC, and a large BIC, just in case one of them goes bad and I need to actually light a fire, so I always carry a little backup there, just for safety reasons. And then my tiny medical kit. has some Band-Aids, gauze wrap, waterproof matches, that sort of thing. Nothing special. All right, I have a, uh, a pen in here in case you need to sign tags, do whatever, depending on what state you're in. And then I have a very little tiny toothbrush. Again, trying to save those little bit of ounces I can where needed. And it looks like there is, I don't know, I think it looks deer hair maybe, bear hair on there. That's kind of gross. Probably should clean that. But I don't really care if I'm out hunting, so you can get dirty. It's part of, part of life. Uh, as you heard me mention earlier, I have the Garmin InReach Mini, back on your peace of mind. And unfortunately, you can do some work-related things on here to keep track of work. So I will turn that on every now and then to make sure everything's going well. But also keep track of, you know, let your family know that you're safe and all that good stuff. Or the best part is sending uh, bear down messages to your friends. Headlamps. Both of these are Petzl headlamps. I always carry two. Again, back on your peace of mind, one goes bad, I can use the other one. Both these are rechargeable with the micro USB cord and then the uh, Dark Energy Poseidon charger. And this is the Petzl Actic and Petzl Reactic, or actually, sorry, Petzl Reactic, Petzl Actic on this side. And like I said, both of them rechargeable. That way I can uh, eliminate AAA batteries and just be able to charge all my stuff up and not have her. All right. Ooh, hey, look at that. Found some stuff I didn't talk about earlier in the camping gear. Steaks. So these are an assortment of, ooh, really dusty. For the seek outside, um, little bug out, I believe with all my guidelines, I need 13 steaks. So again, I write down in notes somewhere that I need 13 steaks, that way I don't mess up and not bring enough steaks, but I have an assortment of some longer steaks. And then I have some smaller ones made out of basically a carbon fiber arrow with a little tip on the end and a little piece of metal glued on the top. So these are mainly for my guidelines and then my main, oops, my main part of my tent, we'll get these little longer ones. 
other pieces of gear, we got some um, food hanging cord. These are just Z packs. I think it's a slick line with a random carabiner on the end of it for just hanging food. Keep away from them G bears on the hunt. And then the bag I put all my food in, this is a, I believe it's an outdoor research bag. Can't remember what size it is, but this is where I put all my food in to uh, and hang in a tree. Other, or another time you can do this too to save some extra weight. Yeah, it's not gonna be saving that much weight, but you can also use one of your game bags to put all that meat in and hang it up in a tree. And then when you use the game bag later, obviously you're probably gonna be packing out. So, so water is very precious in the backcountry, and that, so I like to grab it when I can or grab snow and start melting it. So I always carry a drone or MSR drone light bag. This is a six liter and yeah, it's just super handy. As you can see, it folds up really small and I can store a bunch of water at camp in here and then transfer it to my other devices for consuming water. And then I have a go hunt Nalgene. I go back and forth on if I should actually carry a Nalgene. And sometimes while I am driving to a hunt, I will actually find the perfect water bottle at some random gas station that's gonna be a little bit lighter than Nalgene and I'll pick one of those up. Most of the time those are like smart water bottles, just saves a little bit extra weight, but sometimes it is nice to have a Nalgene with the big top on it for, again, putting snow in there and trying to melt it or mixing up some sort of electrolyte drink when you're in the mountains. Optics, let's jump into the fun stuff. Uh, optics, pretty much staying the same thing as normal. Um, this is just the marsupial gear enclosed bino harness, I believe it's the size large. Love it because at the front has a zipper pouch, so I keep extra pair of contacts in here because I am blind as a bat, so I lose a contact from wind. If I'm getting ready to shoot an animal, I want to have a contact ready, so I just keep those in, in the front here. Also keep some of my hunting license in there as well. Another cool little tip in the back, there's this obviously little mesh compartment. You can put your phone, put other thing, pieces of gear in there. I always keep a rangefinder battery in there. I was on a hunt a couple years ago where I actually somehow did not have an extra rangefinder battery and I ranged an animal and couldn't kill it because I didn't have the battery and that wasn't fun. So I had to go back to my truck later and get my rangefinder battery. Binos are just my all time favorite Vortex UHD 12 by 50s. I believe last year I was using the 10 by 50s and I actually just missed my 12s a lot and now I'm going back to the 12 by 50s because the more a little, more, a little more magnification sitting down glassing up a tripod all day. And then aside here, marsupial rangefinder pouch with the SIG 8K rangefinder. So this is probably one of the new pieces I changed this year. Went from the 2400 ABS to the 8K. A little more features in here, a little further ranging, a little bit tighter beam diversions, and just a lot more features. That's going to enable me to make the perfect one-shot kill on a bear in this case. And I just have a little rangefinder tether attached to here. Because even though it's on here, I just never know if my rangefinder is going to fall out. And that way it can grab onto here and not hit the dirt. Spend a lot of money on optics. You want to protect your optics. And then the side, I just have a little, if I can get it out, wind indicator here in my bino harness. Tripod, this is another new area. As you guys remember, we did a video way back in the day, Trail and I, talking about a badass zero tripod that was coming out. And that is this tripod right here, Siru ST124 tripod. It's actually only like five ounces heavier than my um, O24S something or another. Can't remember what that one is called now. It's only five ounces heavy, heavier than the other one. And actually, I can stand in glass with this one. And it's just going to be a little more stable platform, especially when I'm running the bigger optics now. So it's not that much heavier. And you can't kill what you can't find, which brings me to... The big dog, the eyes of God, the Swarovski 115. Um, so I have the 115 in the front, ATX adapter in the back here, and I have my phone scope set up already on here. This is just the lens cover, and then the phone scope rings for taking digiscope, and I have a Siru um, plate on the bottom. This thing is giant, super heavy, and that goes in the same caveat I talked about earlier. You don't need to have a bunch of expensive stuff to hunt, but to me, this is worth it for the style of hunting I do, especially later in the fall, mule deer, even bears right now in the spring, just trying to pick apart shadows, pick apart little, little pockets. And so to me, it's worth carrying some big, heavy optics. And then underneath here, I just have my glassing pad. This is just a foldable old thermarest that I cut, that I will sit on. And again, it makes a great little doormat too when you're camping to put your boots on in the morning. And then under optics, 
Vortex Pro bino adapter with a serial plate in the bottom. Because again, I do a lot of glassing off a tripod, trying to find animals, no matter what type of year it is. And that just helps me. But you just got to make sure you always know where this is and don't set it down and lose it. It's the only downfall of a bino adapter. All right, let's jump into another one of my favorite areas, my weapon. Everyone knows I love a big, heavy rifle. And I don't care. People make fun of me for it. But the weapon is what kills. And so I will have a heavy platform because to me it's more stable and I'm really comfortable behind it. So this is a Browning X-Bolt long range, 300 rum with a Macmillan A35 adjustable stock. Everyone knows I've ran 300 wind mags for a long time. I just wanted to try something different and go bigger. So I have a 300 rum running 80G brass, 215 match primers right now. As everyone knows, bullets is hard to find, components are hard to find. So right now I'm just running some 220X burger bullets and H1000 primers, but I'm hoping to get some 245 burgers or some 208 Barnes bullets here shortly to start playing around with some other stuff. But I got this stuff loaded for bears and that's what I'm gonna use. So, and I guess you can see here on the side I have the short action precision two round ammo holder because these things are seated super, super long. So I will have to single feed it. And again, it's just something I practice with all the time and I'm super comfortable with it. And so it works for me. I don't try to seat my bullets to make it fit in the mag. I just, whatever it shoots best, that's what I need to do. And signal feeding is the way to do it for me. Rifle scope, this is a Vortex Razor Gen 2, four and a half to 27, first focal plane. Absolutely love this rifle scope. Put this on a couple of my other wind mags before. Swapped it over here to the rum. And on top I have some scope levels. Cannot remember the name for the life of me right now, so I apologize. I have a scope level on the top, and also on the side, I have one of these little fold-out ones. Just a little backup scope level, just to make sure I'm taking the most accurate shot possible. Vortex pre Precision um, Rings. I believe these are the lows, 0.92s. Scope caps on the front and the back. Um, I have Vortex Throw Lever on the side here. Moving to the front, I have a Area 419 um, Bipod Picatinny Rail. And then my bipod is actually the MDT Skypod Gen 2 standard pull. Really love it. Very versatile. A lot of adjustments I can make. So I, it's really great for actually bear hunting because you never know what type of terrain a bear is going to be in. Might take a steep uphill shot, and that way I can just make this super long and again move it and take an uphill shot if need be. But it's also very stable, shooting a low platform. And then muzzle brake. This is a Snowy Mountain Rifles Snowflake. Um, this is their titanium three port. For a 30 cal, absolutely love the brake. Allows me to sit behind the gun and track my impacts and take some of the uh, recoil out of it. All right, so another piece on my rifle, I have the Quake rifle sling. I just don't have it attached right now because we're on the table. And then I also have the Go Hunt gun slicker that I'll put over the top of the whole rifle, protect the action from the elements, protect the barrel from any sort of debris. Obviously it'll be taped as well, electrical tape. But again, just give me a little peace of mind that my weapon is protected at all times because a weapon on a hunt is everything to me. So we'll carefully set that down. And other part of my rifle gear is the Rugged Ridge rear support. Same one I've used forever. I spray paint it orange, that way I don't lose it. And this allows me a different adjustability for different types of shots when I am laying prone. And as you guys know from other videos, I like shooting prone because it's the most stable shot. And I owe it to an animal to make the best shot possible, so I'll always find a place to shoot prone, whether that's moving back 50 yards if I need to, or moving my left or right. I'll find a way to shoot prone on an animal, because I owe it to an animal. And other rifle stuff. Where is my ammo holder? I just made a giant mess. Okay, another piece of my rifle gear. Little ammo holder, I believe this is made by AEM Precision. I really like this one because it just folds out, no Velcro on it, and allows me to carry 10 rounds very easily and keeps them protected and keeps them safe. And I usually just keep this in the top load of my backpack. Then once I am going on a stock, I'll transfer this from the top load of my backpack into my pocket. That way I just have some extra, extra rounds if need be, but hopefully you never have to do that. And then last piece probably on the rifle setup, this is my Kestrel 5700 Elite, basically weather meter, ballistics app, everything I need. If you know my rangefinder somehow doesn't give me the right uh, MOA, I can use this and just plug all my information in here. Well, it already is in there, but just gives me a little more 
peace of mind when I am taking a one shot, one kill on a bear. All right, well, let's jump into probably one of the most important pieces on a mountain style hunt, especially like a bear hunt like this, is a backpack. So it's the same backpack I started using last year. It's the Stone Glacier Sky Guide 7900 on their X curve frame. I do have one hip, hip belt on the side, and I do believe I have their rifle holder here in the right. And overall, I just love this backpack. I wanted to go a little bigger in the bag, so I actually sold them my Sky Archer bag, just because, again, I'm carrying some heavier optics and stuff like that now, and I just want to have a little bigger bag to do that, and it's not that much heavier than uh, my Sky Archer. So this bag's really comfortable, killed a lot of animals with it, the frame especially, so I just love the X-Curve frame. I have both, but I think I lean more towards the X-Curve when I'm rolling through some things. And then on top of that, I also have my little uh, cotton carriers for my, um, my Sony camera that I always t have with me to take photos because I like documenting my hunts for family, friends, and obviously work-related stuff. And then a couple pieces of gear I forgot. Cell phone. This is just mainly for Digiscope, also for go hunt maps, being able to navigate, drop my waypoints, have a hunt plan, be more successful. And just the phone scope adapter on the back. And obviously I mentioned I had the phone scope adapter on my spotting scope. And then I forgot to talk about my game, game bags. So these are our Ollie, these are the ultra light, high country game bags. I believe I'm taking five on this hunt. I just want to have one extra bag for the bear hide after we kill a bear. Pack up meat and pack out hide because I love bear meat. So that's pretty much a rundown of every little piece of gear I'm carrying on this spring bear hunt. Again, obviously there's a million different ways you can do this. You don't have to have Sitka. You don't have to use, you know, whatever else I'm running here, but it's my system and it works well for me. And that's why I just want to run through this, give you guys some suggestions on different ways to do this. And like I said, to begin, this is why I love setting my gear out right now because I can figure out where my holes are. What I've forgotten, I had to make a trip home earlier today because I forgot some pieces of gear. So now I'm going to take all this gear right here, dump it into a tote. That way I'm ready to go on my hunt. And I also have my Excel spreadsheets, or actually they're Google Sheets, of all my gear in there as well. And I can mark on there when I packed them and when I've got them all organized because you don't want to forget something on a hunt. Another thing, we always get asked what our gear list exactly weighs. And so this time we're going to go through that. So right now I'm going to take all this gear, throw it in my backpack like I was going to go on my hunt, exactly how I'm going to pack it, and then we're gonna go out and get an exact weight for you guys. Obviously, this does not include food, but you'll get a base on all the gear and stuff like that. And food just can probably add a pound, pound and a half per day. So, all the exciting stuff done. Gosh dang, I forgot something else. Look at that, bear spray, gotta have it. Um, yeah, we'll just go out and weigh some stuff right now. All right, so as you just saw, loaded everything in here gear-wise, obviously minus food, but there's two liters of water. And now we got this gigantic scale. Turn it on here and we're gonna get a weight for you guys. This is exactly what I'd be carrying gear-wise in my backpack. Here we go. 43 pounds, 43.2. So yeah, a lot of fun. Carry every single day. And plus, obviously, on top of that, I have to throw my rifle on there too, which weighs a ton. And then you have food every day, which pound, pound and a half per day. So it will definitely be in that uh, 60 pound range, but 43 pound backpack for spring bear hunt. All right, so that is my entire 2022 spring bear gear list. Obviously, it's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff that I've used quite a bit and trust, and that's why I use what I use right now. Definitely use whatever you feel like you need to do to spring bear hunt. That's the beauty about hunting. Whatever gear you got can work. Um, if you have any questions on the gear, uh, drop them in the comments below. Happy to answer anything you guys have. There'll also be a follow-up article, like always, that shows item by item about what gear I carry. And you guys can check it out in the Go Gear Shop. So stay tuned, and if you have a spring bear hunt, good luck this year.